I really yeah, couldn't yeah, understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, surely. Okay, now before moving further, I really want to see that who are our audience. For that sake, I am going to start a quick poll and you can basically answer this poll. This is about which region do you belong? Just take your time and uh, answer this poll. So 90% are already answered the poll. So that's why I'm ending the poll and going to share the result with you guys. So can you see the result guys? So we have yes. participants from Indian subcontinent, from India and Pakistan that are like 39%, around 11 participants. We have some participants from USA and Canada, uh, from Gulf, from Australia and we have quite a lot of participants from some other regions. Uh, I'm sure that few of them are from South Africa. Anyone else except South Africa and others? So I, I assume that uh, others are like mostly from South Africa. Let's move further. and start another poll. This poll talks about your background. Uh, I'm just trying to launch another poll, that is poll two. Uh, this poll is from your professional background. It will give, give me an idea that where should I focus more during this course. If your background is from waterfall or from agile without uh, any knowledge of discipline agile or you have a good understanding of both agile and discipline agile. Well, awesome. So we already got 90% uh, of the votes. So that's why I'm ending this poll and showing the results with you guys. As you guys can see that uh, most of you guys, um, they fall under the category, either waterfall or agile, but no discipline agile. In fact, 45% uh, of you, uh, they don't have any agile knowledge at all. 52% uh, 50 of the participants, they have good understanding of both waterfall method and agile way of working. And we have only one participant who got an understanding of both agile and disciplined agile. Now let's move further. Uh, I'm uh, stop sharing the result and we'll request you to do a uh, brief ice breaking activity uh, by using a pen or by just uh, doing it in your halt. Just think about uh, your name, your role at work, uh, what you are expecting from this class. What will be uh, success look like for you after uh, 
this class. And just one thing uh, we don't know about yourself. And then I will request few of the participants to share uh, the answers for these questions. So please take one minute. Yes, Shakib, you can write it uh, on your notebook if possible. Well, uh, thank you everyone. Uh, now I would request someone from USA or Canada uh, to introduce him or herself and answer these questions. Anyone from USA or Canada? Yes, hello, my name is Beruz. I'm from Canada. Uh, my role is uh, project manager, and uh, I really want to see uh, what can I get uh, in terms of agile practices. And uh, it is, uh, if it is a word to go for a disciplined agile certificate, because it's a kind of new, uh, to my understanding. And uh, that's it for me. Uh, thanks. Uh, something that we don't know about you. In fact, we really don't know anything except your name, but something interesting about you. Uh, maybe right now I'm working with uh, uh, an, uh, a consulting company. Uh, yeah. and so uh, I have another hat. I'm working as engage engagement manager. This is a new uh, experience for me as well. So uh, this Agile uh, certification and methodology, I, I believe that it's going to help me a lot in my uh, present and future endeavors. Awesome, thanks Beros. Uh, now, someone from Pakistan or India, Assalamu alaikum, uh, how are you fine? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Faisal uh, Sul, for arranging this wonderful session for Discipline Agile. I, I really appreciate that it is the need of the time. And I am from Pakistan, but currently I am in Saudi Arabia. And uh, I'm Tosiyo Ahmad Khan. My role at work is uh, I am project engineer in Saudi Electricity Company. and what will make this class a success for me. Basically, uh, I will uh, eager to le uh, learn about discipline agile concepts and different certifications. And one thing you don't know about me is that uh, I am also a uh, PMP trainer for this information for other person also. So thank you very much. 
most welcome to see and thanks for your introduction now on this point i would request someone from saudi arabia or gulf countries to introduce him or herself Yes, anyone from Saudi Arabia or Gulf? Well, uh, then in that case, I would request Ida, her Hi, Faiz. Uh, not sure if I did pronounce your name correctly. And so I mean, likewise, I mean, I'm not <laughs> sure either. <laughs> Aida. Yeah, yes, Aida. Yes, thank you. Um, well, my, my name is Aida. I, I work as a business advisor in, in an area of PMO in Hewlett Packard okay. Enterprise in Mexico. I'm based in Guadalajara, Mexico. Mexico. Yes. Awesome. Uh, yeah, N nice introducing uh, with you, Aida. And uh, what you are expecting from this course? Well, I'm preparing my um, PMP certification, maybe to know more. Yeah, have sure. more, more knowledge, yes. Yeah, surely, Aida. Though this session will not be fully focused on PMP certification, it is more towards agile and discipline yes. agile. But still, it is project management methodology. In the end, it will help you, especially when you are preparing for PMP in 2021. That includes agile component as well. Yes. Uh, yeah. Thanks, Aida. And then uh, now I would request someone from New Zealand or Australia to introduce him or herself. We had very few participants from New Zealand and Australia. If someone is from this region, just feel free to introduce himself or herself. Okay, in that case, I would request Caroline Merenga to introduce herself. Hi, I'm Caroline Merenga. My role at work is a project controller. What will make this class success for me is learn more about puzzle. Um, just a little bit understanding about it. Yep. And one thing you don't know about me that um, that's a little hard. I can write. Yeah. <laughs> I can write poems. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Not a problem, Caroline. Yeah. Thanks for introducing yourself. And then. And just last one introduction, and that would be from others, the people from other regions. One of you, please. Hi, I am Gitekin from Azerbaijan, Kazakhstan. Um, I am project manager at Eurasia Partnership Foundation. It is an international NGO. And why I am here, I obtained my PMI EC certificate in March this year. And now I am interested in disciplined agile. Uh, actually, I don't have any opinion what is this. And that's Surely. why I am here. Yes, uh, I'm here to get information what is disciplined agile or how we can obtain the certificates. And I hope this session will be very useful. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks Gultakin and thanks for introducing yourself and yeah, as you said that purpose of this course is fully focused on Agile and uh, with the in-depth focus on Discipline Agile so that it can give you an idea that what is DA, what is DA ways of working and, and does it make any sense to you? Uh, will it generate any interest in you or not? So that's the purpose of today's session. Now onwards, I am going, going to mute you all. And in case, if you guys have any question, just raise your hand and I will basically uh, allow you to 
uh, ask a question by unmuting you. Is it fine with you guys? Yes. Sir. Awesome. Thank you. Well, uh, on this point, I would request Shakir just to try to erase uh, the ink that is on the screen because like I tried to erase this ink, but I really couldn't do it. Somehow Shakir is able to uh, put some words here. Thanks Shakir. Okay, so uh, as we have seen in the poll that uh, few of you guys have no background in Agile at all. So firstly, what we will do, we will uh, discuss Agile in general, uh, and then from there we will move towards discipline Agile. To start our session, how many of you know this particular diagram? Just feel free to unmute and answer the question. Have you seen this diagram before? What it talks about? Okay, no. so uh, that's all right. So this particular diagram is a water waterfall way of managing software projects. You all are from project management background. You are well aware of predictive method or waterfall method where we do a thorough plan in the start and then by following that plan, we execute our project and we keep on monitoring and control. Now, this particular diagram, we call it V-shaped diagram. This is waterfall method of managing software projects or software uh, development life cycle. It starts from gathering the requirements and then based on that requirements, we architect our solution, we architect our software, then we design. And after all those activities, we start constructing our solution. We start implementing. Once our implementation is done for a portion of our software or a product, then we keep on doing some testing, some quality assurance. For each component, we do unit testing. The purpose of unit testing is to validate that particular component of our code in our software application. And then uh, we go to next level. We confirm our design with the help of some functional testing and we confirm that if our design is well aligned with our current systems, with our organization's architecture, with the help of some integration testing. And then we see that, okay, the requirements we gathered from our users uh, now are developed well. And with the help of some user acceptance uh, testing, we call it UAT. We confirm that these requirements are fully implemented in our software solution. But that is an old way of working. It is based on the theories of 1960s, 1970s, where they talked about that this is, uh, this is the way of developing any software. We create a thorough document that include all of our requirements, our plan to basically uh, to architect and design those requirements. And once that document is ready, the next step is by following that document of requirements, we construct our solution. However, what happens, and we have seen very recently in 90s and in the start of 21st century that this takes a lot of time. The planning for software requirements and analysis, architecture and design. Uh, for example, we spend three to six months uh, on this document of requirements, planning, and analysis and design. Uh, once we start developing, user requirements change very fast. Stakeholder requirements change very fast because they have seen new and new solutions. They have got new and new ideas. Similarly, on the other side, the technologies are very disruptive. They are changing very fast. So 
whatever the requirements initially given by our stakeholders are not of any use anymore. They really want to change those requirements. Similarly, as a development team, we have seen new and new technologies that could better fit to develop our solutions. So in that case, what happened that all of our effort of previous six months or nine months gone wasted. And uh, and the solution we are going to develop is something that is already obsolete. It means that this way of working is not going to work. This thing was realized by software development leaders back in 1990s, and they start developing a different way of working. And we call them agile way of working. Let me explain this agile way of working and where it could be used with the help of this small graph. For example, if on X axis we have disruptive technologies and on Y axis we have user requirements and we call them, okay, the uh, requirements which are changing requirements are uncertain requirements. So uncertain requirements on vertical axis and disruptive technologies on uh, X axis. If technologies are very less disruptive and requirements are very certain or very less uncertain, in that case, we can use this technique this V model, this traditional technique. However, if our requirements become more and more uncertain and our technologies become more and more disruptive, then we call it complicated scenarios. In case of complicated scenarios, we really cannot use this V-shape model. Similarly, if our requirements become even more uncertain and technologies become more and more disruptive, like the introduction of uh, artificial intelligence, IoT or machine learning, etc., in that case, still we cannot use V-shape model. So for these two quadrants, that is complicated quadrant, and I'm going to call the next quadrant a complex quadrant. In that case, we have to find a different way of working. And we also have to think differently. And this uh, thinking differently, this working differently is called agile way of working. It means that if our solutions are more and more complicated, more and more complex, in that case, agile project management is the way to go. However, if our technologies and the requirements become very uncertain, very disruptive, we call this quadrant is anarchy. In anarchy, nothing works. So it's better if our solution is like towards anarchy, where requirements are changing every day, technology is changing every day, no method is going to work. It means that we should bring our solution back to either complex scenario or complicated scenario so that our agile way of working could work. That was the reason behind this new method of project management called agile project management. Any question at this point in time? <clears throat> Okay, yeah, thank you. Uh, now we are moving further. In case if you are not muted, please mute yourself. So, uh, as I mentioned that uh, in 1990s, uh, the thought leaders in software industry, they start thinking about a different way of working. Agile, in 2002, they published their first manifesto called Agile Manifesto. Uh, how many of you are aware of this uh, Agile Manifesto and its four values? Yeah, we are aware. Yeah, awesome. Vinay, you raise your hand. Would you like to unmute yourself and talk about uh, these four values of Agile? Yes, so I've basically undergone one of the uh, Agile training, so I came across this and uh, I kind of applying these to one of my uh, uh, software projects. Yes, I think mm -hmm. 
give more of importance to the uh, individuals and interactions rather than just uh, following the process and the tool as set by the company or some of the industry uh, process tools. Yeah. And uh, I think they also stress upon a, a working piece of software rather than the comprehensive documentation like what you were mentioning in the previous slide. True. And, and this also actually helps having a lot of customer uh, connects rather like a contract negotiation. It's not like we signed up a contract and we see the customer after two years of when the product is ready, but this is not a something of that sort. Fully agree. And like as I mentioned, I think we should always be change averse, so we should be ready to re respond to the change. Uh, like you were actually mentioning, especially with the disrupt disruptive technologies and uh, changing uh, requirements class needs. And yeah. They're thinking, okay, this is the plan, and I'm not going to change. Yeah. So yeah. You can't we resist so well? We need to be flexible and resilient with the changes. Yeah, fully agreed. Uh, Vinay, yeah, thanks a lot for sharing. So as Vinay shared that though there is value on the right hand side of this manifesto, but we prefer these components over these components. So we prefer individual and interactions over processes and tools. We believe in working software than comprehensive documentation, though documentation is important uh, as well. Contracts are always there, but our focus shouldn't be on like uh, negotiating the contract and locking the scope and uh, mean, and then working on it. Our focus is more towards like customer collaboration. We really want to give value to the customer for which customer is paying to us. We want to give the competitive advantage to our customers. So that's our preference. And similarly, uh, no doubt, Agile also requires a lot of planning, but our focus is we should plan in such a way that we should be able to respond to the changes, especially the requirements changing from our uh, clients or from our uh, stakeholders. Similarly, based on these four values of Agile Manifesto, there are 12 principles of Agile. Anyone who is not aware of these principles? Yeah, you can write down if you are not aware of these 12 principles that are based on the four values. Okay, uh, let me quickly go through these principles for those who are not aware of it. Uh, our focus is to satisfy the customers. We also welcome change. We deliver frequent. We believe in working together with trust and support in a face-to-face -face, uh, manner. We believe in working software through a sustainable development with a continuous attention to technical excellence. Uh, we try to maintain simplicity. Uh, we believe in self-organizing teams and we always reflect and adjust our way of working over the time. So these are 12 principles uh, of Agile that are based on the four values. And here in this particular slide, uh, what we are saying that everybody is talking about Agile. Agile way of working. In fact, Agile way of working is fantastic. Agile methods are fantastic. Scrum does work very fantastically. But the thing is like the right way of thinking about Agile is not doing Agile in the start, not adopting a particular method in first, but firstly thinking as Agile, being an Agile. And we can do it by basically understanding four values of Agile, acting upon 12 principles of Agile, and then based on that, we can adopt any method, any Agile method. And most of you are aware of the methods that are available in market. For example, Scrum, Extreme Programming, DSDM, Kanban, Safe, Discipline Agile, Less, that is large-scale Scrum, Spotify, so on, so forth. So 
until you don't have this mindset of being agile, using a particular method will not improve your performance as a team, as an individual, or as an enterprise. Though doing agile is very, very important, but firstly, we should be agile before doing agile. Here, we understood being agile is important, uh, but how to do agile? In the end, we have to work. Uh, there are many different methods that are used uh, around the globe in software project management, in software industry. In fact, agile is now getting more and more popular beyond software. Agile is being used in all different industries, in IT operation, in technology, in human resource, in procurement, in education, you name it. All the industries start embracing this well-proven uh, way of project management called agile. One of the famous method that is used in software industry or in the technology enterprises to do agile, especially on the team level is Scrum. Scrum is a method that was developed back in 1990s. Uh, and this method uh, and its few of terminologies are taken from the rugby game. Uh, I believe the people uh, who's, uh, you, are, you are well aware of rugby game uh, and you know some of the key terminologies of rugby game, for example, scrum itself, sprint, etc. So these terminologies are taken from the rugby game and the purpose was just to show that what we are doing, we are doing something different. So we are not going to use the uh, same naming conventions that are common in project management. So they took or they borrowed these terminologies from uh, rugby game. Now, how many of you are aware of this particular diagram? Feel free to raise your hand. Yes, Vinay. Yeah, you raise your hand and uh, would you like to comment on this diagram? What this diagram is talking about? I think this diagram talks about the the flow and cycles that are involved with the uh, the overall scrum process where we start off with a vision converting it to the product backlog and uh, splitting them into the number of iterations and we can call it as a sprint gen which generally lasts for two to four weeks and uh, there are a couple of uh, ceremonies in this process one is like a daily scrum meeting where people stand up for 15 minutes and discuss about what they have done yesterday what they would be doing and if there are any uh, uh, impediments then after two weeks or towards the end of the sprint they might have a, a sprint review and mm -hmm. uh, follow a uh, sprint retrospective though basically sprint retrospective they actually talk about what went really well what they should start doing what should it stop doing and all. Yeah, thanks. And thanks, Vinay. So basically, Scrum is one of the methods that helps on a team level, not on an enterprise level, uh, to implement agile methods uh, for better performance. Uh, Scrum is very popular because it provides you a structured way of uh, implementing agile on team level. Uh, on uh, for the development teams uh, and its focus is more on the development work uh, the solution development work solution construction work so uh, this scrum uh, this method says that okay what we do is we put all of our requirements in the form of user stories in a product backlog product backlog for waterfall gaze is just like a uh, you can think of work breakdown structure. Uh, so all the requirements go there, all the scope go there, and from there what we do, we pick top priority items in our sprint planning uh, meeting where what we do is we write down a subset of these requirements 
this subset is highly prioritized requirements these are the requirements this is the work that we are going to do in next couple of weeks and we put these top requirements top priority requirements in our sprint backlog sprint backlog is basically subset of product backlog when our requirements for example three or four user stories they come in sprint backlog we do a detailed planning and estimation of the work needed to complete these user stories and then over the period of one to four weeks you can say one to four weeks okay though uh, mm, here i am talking about agile not talking about scrum in particular one to four weeks uh, and we come try to complete those user stories uh, though the range is one to four weeks but we prefer less uh, period like one week we want to run our iteration we want to run our sprint only for uh, one week or two weeks in fact scrum does it for two weeks xp does it for one week so as a team as a development team we work on the user story and we try to develop the solution and during that team, and during that time uh, as a team we do daily scrum daily scrum is something a coordination meeting that we do each day so that we can see that um, what we did yesterday what we are going to do today and but there are any impediments or issues to resolve normally these meetings are not long only 15 minutes long and we really don't discuss in detail that what we did but we just mention it at the end of a sprint of either one week or two weeks whatever we develop whatever product or user stories we develop we show it to our customers or our stakeholders so that they can have a look that what we did is it acceptable if it is acceptable what to do next similarly if it is not acceptable then what are the new requirements what are the new changes that's what we do and based on customers feedback we uh, update or we groom our backlog and we keep on moving similarly we always have a meeting at the end of our sprint at the end of our iteration and this meeting is not for the stakeholders this meeting is for us as a team and in this meeting we call it retrospective uh, we talk about uh, how good we did in the last sprint how good was our process how good we developed our product is there any issue on the people level if there are any issues how can we improve it how can we improve uh, our relationship with the people how can we improve our processes how to how can improve our product development so we do retrospective and then we go back again and pick next prioritized items bring it in our sprint backlog and story keep on going in scrum we can clearly see that it's a very structured method however it also bring a lot of processes in it a lot of requirements in it it tells us what to do it basically where give us a structure but also require from us to follow scrum as it is do daily scrums daily do uh, sprint reviews do uh, sprint rep retrospectives uh, put everything in the product backlog based on the business value so on so forth on scrum normally there are three common roles and most of you guys are aware of these roles the first role is product owner anyone want to comment who is a product owner just raise your hand yes ishan basically business analyst normally be the product owner who is responsible for all the arrangement of the product backlog items and prioritization of the product backlog 
type of one stop shop for the development team to get the requirements okay so uh, when we say get the requirements it's not only requirements itself but it also include how to prioritize those requirements based on the value based on the risk based on the dependencies based on the timelines so on so forth so it's not compulsory that bas should be product owner but they can be product owners and now uh, this is one of the role uh, the purpose of this role is our development team should work closely with the customer with the stakeholder or someone who is the representative of the customer or the stakeholders the second role is normally we call them scrum master or in some other methods they are called agile coaches and anyone would like to comment um, who are like scrum master or agile coaches i tell a16 plus um actually i i i, I had a question uh, uh before we moved on on the product owner yeah sure um i i actually wanted to check uh since scrum has got three roles which is the product owner mm -hmm. uh, the scrum master and the team mm -hmm. so 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 does it imply that uh, the, the the product owner is the is the sponsor uh, of no. the project no not really i mean uh, and the thing is sponsor could be someone else in fact normally they are someone else but they really don't have time to work closely with the development team not only sponsor but many other functional managers many other uh, users of the products or uh, many other departments they really cannot work directly with the team so it's important that there should be someone who is representing project sponsor or representing uh, all the stakeholders or the users and he or she is someone who has a good understanding of both business and technology who not only can work on one end with the business people but on the other end with the development team thank thank you for that so 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 that person can be an appointed representative from the business side yeah vice of customer we normally call them okay thank you yeah most welcome so anyone would like to comment on the scrum master what is this role and what it does Yes, anyone? Scrum Master, yes, Bine. I think he's the one who travels along with the uh, team, runs the daily scrums and the impediments that come on the way. Mm -hmm. And if we actually talk about in PMP terminology, he should be a good servant leader. Yeah, someone uh, who basically uh, ensures that team is following the scrum method properly uh, they are working with the product owner they are taking part in all different scrum ceremonies maybe you are aware of that there are like uh, five different type of ceremonies or events we call them scrum events or ceremonies for example product backlog refinement meetings sprint backlog meetings daily scrums sprint reviews and sprint retrospectives uh, and also uh, all the good practices of scrum are being practiced by the team this is the responsibility of a scrum master but again scrum master is not a project manager who assign work to the team he or she works as a servant leader to the team and ensure that whatever team requires should be available for the team whatever impediments come on the way should be resolved and team should have a good access to the stakeholders and the product owner and then there comes 
the last role that is um, development team or we call them developers anyone would like to come in on the development team So development team are basically our knowledge workers. They are our doers. They are our programmers, uh, solution architects or application architects. They are our business analysts. They are our testers. They are our uh, system integrators who work together to develop the solution and ensure that whatever is prioritized is developed uh, in an early and often manner. Normally, these people are cross-functional people. We call them journalizing specialists. These are people who have more than one area of expertise or at least strive for one more than one area of expertise. Any question about Sukram? Well, thank you, everyone. Now, let's move further. And let's talk about disciplined agile. Now, agile methods were initially started back in 90s. Agile manifesto was published in uh, back in 2002. And after that, we have seen clear advantages of agile way of working or agile methodologies because uh, we have seen that now our software solutions are developed uh, in a much better way, catering uh, the needs of the uh, catering the needs of the stakeholders and uh, using the advanced technologies or current technologies. However, another thing what we have seen is um, agile is aging over the period of time. The purpose of Agile was that we should be able to respond to the changes. Uh, we should be able to work in a collaborative fashion instead of working in the silos. The purpose of Agile was to work closely with the stakeholders because these were the issues back in 1990s and early start 2000. However, uh, but we saw that um, now teams are fully changed. Uh, they work together. They work closely with the stakeholder, with the product owner. So uh, at that time, the role of uh, Scrum Master was introduced only because of these reasons. But do you really think that the teams which are self-organized, self-managed, still, still need this type of role? who ensure that uh, Scrum is being practiced or Agile ways are being practiced. And also, uh, another important thing is like, uh, as we uh, keep on using Agile, uh, we keep on uh, following Agile manifesto, Agile values and principles, we have seen that we can improve uh, our values we can improve our principles. We can do it in a much better way that we are currently doing. And most importantly, we must not follow a prescribed method or framework such as Scrum or SAFE. Because the thing is, now what's happening instead of teams, which were like basic value of Agile, uh, instead of teams choosing their own way of working as a self-organized or self-managed team, what we have seen is that methods are imposed on us, framework are imposed on us. For example, Scrum or XP, for example, Safe or Spotify for enterprise level agile. And we really don't have choice. In fact, these methods, they control us. We don't have freedom to choose and evolve our way of working. That is one of the key principles of uh, Agile. Uh, in fact, uh, this thing is uh, called EIC. AIC is a terminology called Agile Industrial Complex. This terminology was coined by Martin Fowler back in 2018. and uh, he said that we should get rid of 
AIC or agile industrial complex and we should not impose the methods or we are working on the teams teams should choose their way of working another important observation made by Martin Fowler was that uh, what we have seen is like our focus is more on agile ceremonies, agile meetings or agile artifacts to produce though lightweight, but our focus has gone away from technical excellence. Similarly, what we have seen is like our focus has more become like on working software instead of consumable solutions. What we really want is we want to develop a working software that shouldn't be software for the sake of software, but it should be something uh, our stakeholders want to use and it should be of some use to our stakeholder. So we normally call it consumable solution instead of working software. Similarly, what we really want is our teams should be long standing teams built around our products, built around our services for which we are going to uh, construct, which we are going to develop. So, uh, what happened is uh, two guys, Scott Ambler and Mark Lines, in back in 2012, have seen all those practices which are okay but are not awesome are not fantastic and uh, we are more and more pres prescribed with the methods like scrum method or xp method or dsdm method or safe framework etc so what they thought is they they thought that these practices are fantastic there are uh, a lot of advantages in that in these practices. We can get very good advices from these practices, but we should not be stick. We call it a method prison or framework prison. We should shouldn't be in this prison of method in this prison of framework. We should have liberty. We should have freedom to choose our way of working. And over the period of time as a team, we should be able to evolve our way of working. And at that point, what they did is they developed a framework. We call it discipline. Uh, no, they didn't develop a framework. They basically give us freedom from the framework. They developed a toolkit. And they call it disciplined agile toolkit. And this toolkit is nothing but an agnostic toolkit agnostic of the methods. Now, before moving further, there is a question from someone, I think from Usman. Yes, Usman. Uh, yes, uh, before we move forward uh, uh, to the details of Disciplined Agile, as you mentioned that I can apprehend that we are going to, you know, uh, discuss and introduce another way of jargons or terminologies to make ourselves, you know, uh fixed to the methods or some you know i don't know uh, uh, if you're going to uh, introduce some new uh, terminology which will not be you know uh, strange and i disagree in a way uh, about that we need uh, discipline agile or scale agile or whatever if you recall one of the practices and uh, things which is very important in agile is the process tailoring yep. which gives you the full liberty mm -hmm. and uh, allow you to uh, not to be you know strict that's that's the beauty of agile then why we say that we need something just for the sake of you know i can also make something <laughs> and very frankly a, a new terminology or anything mm -hmm. if it is something like that we should be clear in our minds why we are doing it if it really makes uh, value then it's uh, you know I mean, you are you understanding my point, what I'm trying to say? Uh, I fully yeah. agree. Yeah, basically, that was the mindset of disciplined agile guys. I fully agree, Usman, as you are thinking that, uh, I mean, we really don't need another method. We really don't need any other terminologies. We all, always can improve ourselves. Then why disciplined agile? Basically, 
Discipline Agile is what you are saying. And that's what we are going to see today that Discipline Agile is nothing, not a new framework, not a new method, but it is an agnostic hybrid of all the previous methods because we believe that a lot of good practices are emerged under these practices. And in fact, if you look on this particular slide, we can clearly see that Discipline Agile is an agnostic hybrid that leverages the strategies from a variety of sources. They don't offer a new strategy, a new method or new framework, but what they want is like, they want a freedom. They want to give us a way of working by that will be chosen, that will be evolved by the team, not by a framework, not by a method. So again, as we, for example, uh, mm -hmm. forget about PMI ACP, let's go back to PMP, which mm -hmm. we uh, we have a PM box there, which is uh, treated as a Bible for project management. Mm -hmm. Do you still think that we, we should expect something in DA, Disciplined Agile or Disciplined Agile Scrum Master, there are some fixed fixed rules or methods, which will no. be contrary to what we're discussing. It's, I mean, it oh, should no. more give more leverage, as you mentioned. Yeah, it will be a toolkit that you can use as per your need, as per your context. On the other side, if you talk about PM Bok, uh, the scope of PM Bok is a bit different than Discipline Agile. There are some commonalities between DA and PM Bok, but DA has more commonalities with Agile frameworks and Agile methods. Uh, sorry, I, I think I think I misspelled that. I believe uh, I should have used the word PMI because we are yep. now comparing PMI with SAFE or like uh, Scrum Alliance. Then what no, is the difference? I'm, uh, I'm not comparing uh, basically PMI with SAFE or Scrum. That's number one. Uh, so PMBOK, as you said that uh, they call it Bible of Project Management, etc. Uh, previously, in the PMBOK focus was more on waterfall techniques and according to them they used to offer some best practices that are like uh, applicable for most of the projects in most of the situation now they are still improving it in their next version that is version 7 instead of process based framework they are going towards more like principles of project management and those principles will be applicable to all type of projects in all type of settings that's number 1 and number two is discipline agile is not a comparison between PMI versus SAFE or PMI with Scrum Alliance, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, discipline agile was developed back in 2012 and recently acquired by PMI, but it really doesn't mean that uh, we are going to compare PMI with the SAFE. And on the other side, when we talk about Discipline Agile, Discipline Agile advocate or promote a hybrid uh, but agnostic way of working. That says that all these methods are fantastic, but Scrum could be fantastic in a particular context. On the other side, Kanban could be very fantastic in another way of working. SAFE is very good for enterprise level, but may not fit for all uh, because like the dynamics of each enterprises are different from each other. So what we really want is we really don't go in a mindset of like prescription based methods or framework based methods, but what we want is we want choices for ourselves as a team so that we can apply those choices as per our need, as per our context. That is basically the toolbox. We call it Discipline Agile. Right. right. Let's see. Okay. Okay, cool. So uh, let's move further. Uh, as we uh, just discussed that uh, Discipline Agile is a agnostic hybrid based on DevOps, Extreme Programming, Scrum, Safe, little bit of PM Box, Spotify, Kanban, or Lean, Agile Modeling, Agile Data, uh, Unified Processes, so on, so forth. Now, um, as we, uh, we just talked about, uh, Agile is aging over the period of time, and it makes sense that uh, there is always improvement over the period of time, and that improvement is needed, and Discipline Agile guys, they try to bring that uh, improvement with the help of an agnostic toolkit. We normally define this toolkit a decision process 
uh, toolkit. Uh, the toolkit that help us to choose our processes as per our need. And why we do it? Because discipline agile guys think that each individual is unique. The team in which they work, uh, they are unique. The organizations you know, from each other, the enterprises from each other, they are different. Uh, and uh, and the teams within a particular organization, they interact with each other in a unique fashion. If there is uh, any change um, in one team or one team way of working, it may impact on uh, other teams of working, uh, other teams with whom one team is working. For example, if we talk about this particular team, the individuals in this team are unique, individual in this team are unique. The interaction between them is unique. Similarly, interaction between team one and team three will be unique as well. Their way of working could be unique. One team within the same enterprise might be working based on Scrum. Another team might be working based on Lean or Kanban. So once a change comes within team, uh, this change is uh, like uh, pretty uh, uh, pretty dynamic and the interaction between one team and other team is like something that cannot be comprehended with the help of one method or one solution even at a scale level or a enterprise level. Another important thing is development teams not only they interact with other development teams but also they interact at enterprise level with many different departments of the same enterprise. For example, enterprise level architecture, finance departments, reuse engineering, quality engineering, procurement, uh, so on, so forth. So in fact, each enterprise is just like a CAS or complex adaptive system in which teams interact with each other in an adaptive or constantly changing manners. <coughs> so, uh, for this type of uh, enterprises that are very, very common, our methods should be something, uh, our methods or our way of working should be something that should be adaptive, should be changing and should not be like uh, one fit for all. Uh, this should be something uh, that can work on multiple teams level, though all those teams, they might using different ways of working like agile or exploratory method or lean way of working, etc., etc. And what discipline agile does, it provides them a toolkit that help them help the teams to work in a way that should be inter enterprise aware that should consider the context while choosing a particular life cycle, choosing a particular method or particular strategy. Should provide the choices to the team so that team can choose a particular uh, strategy, particular uh, technique, experiment it and see if it's working. If it's working, adopt it or if it's not, working, then use another technique and keep on evolving their way of working. Similarly, on Agile team, especially if you talk about Scrum or SAFE, uh, normally they don't like this world called governance because they think that governance is a sphere world. It is uh, something uh, that shouldn't be applied in Agile. This is uh, more from a waterfall where basically someone else govern us, someone else micromanage us, they keep an eye on us, but we are self-organized teams, but self-managed teams. However, it's not the case uh, in practical scenarios. The people who uh, give the funding, uh, the clients who provide the money, or the senior management, they always want to see that what's happening on the team level. So what, Mm, and discipline agile does it provides you some milestones we call these milestones lightweight risk-based milestones 
they are not the artifacts they are not the documents for the governance but they are for the sake of seeing that how teams are doing and we call it lean governance similarly discipline agile toolkit provide us continuous improvement a way of continuous improvement but in a guided fashion instead of like continuous improvement on the same for the sake of continuous improvement so these are some of the features of discipline agile toolkit and what we are going to do we are going to look one of the feature called gci or guided continuous improvement any question here how many of you uh, we are going to discuss guided continuous improvement let's start our discussion with continuous improvement how many of you remember yeah. how many of you remember uh, this cycle please raise your hands yes so small yeah unmute yourself please actually it is basically uh, uh, the, at the heart of the continuous improvement and uh, you know where we do the improvements uh, while uh, learning and knowledge sharing based okay. on our you know this cycle plan do check uh, check and act you can say that pdca cycle in yep. agile it is called it's similar yep. to this yep. so it is a cyclic thing which is repetitive and you know continuously you learn from your mistakes and knowledge and uh, you know and refine your uh, based on reflect on your uh, you know problems and uh, improve do improvements so it's at the heart of uh, you know continuous improvement this learning yeah uh, thanks usman thanks for sharing your thoughts as you mentioned that uh, this is basically a kaizen cycle this was first yeah. introduced by demings back in 1970s Uh, at Toyota, in Japan, and uh, this is the heart of continuous improvement. Uh, few guys call, remember it with PDCA, that is Plan, Do, Check, Act. <coughs> Historically, uh, when Deming introduced a cycle, he introduced it as like a Plan, Do, Study, Act. But uh, over the period of time, uh, to make it more lean, he called it PDCA, Replace Study with a Check. However, later he revolted to again PDSA or Plan Do Study Act because study is like more a comprehensive term or a like a superset of checking. Checking is just checking or analyzing, but study is like uh, really looking or evaluating that what's working, what's not working. So either call it PDCA or call it PDSA, the same thing. Now. under this cycle uh, we can clearly see that uh, we can use it for continuous improvement with the help of uh, experiments and normally these experiments are uh, micro level or small incremental changes and the flow chart shows that when there comes a problem okay we call it like problem is identified after that what we do we plan and identify the potential solutions that can resolve this particular problem and based on that problem we experiment that solution and then uh, after implementing the solution we see the effectiveness of the solution either and as a result of the study uh, of assessment we adopt that solution if it works and we abandon it if it doesn't work and after that we share our learning and keep on moving forward and keep on applying the same cycle to resolve all different problems that's called continuous improvement but what discipline agile proposes it proposes that uh, the term we call it guided continuous improvement continuous improvement is fantastic but what do you think if guide is provided to you if toolkit is provided to you that can help you to make your experiments that you are making here more successful no doubt in agile world the 
terminology called feeling fast is like very, very common and very, very fascinating. Everybody loves we should fail fast so that we can save our investment and invest it somewhere else. But in the end, we really don't do our experiments for failing fast. The purpose of doing experiments is to succeed and we can be more successful if we can have a good or guided continu continuous improvement strategies, a toolkit, a toolbox that can help us to succeed often than failing fast. So that's what Discipline Agile provides. Uh, and we normally call it guided continuous improvement and DA provide it with the help of an agnostic toolkit. It is a very comprehensive toolkit that helps the people uh, to improve continuously, but in a guided fashion. And the advantage of doing that is shown in this particular uh, graph. You can clearly see that this solid line, uh, it is showing that uh, once we adopt agile way of working, either any prescriptive method like Scrum or SAFE or NESS, etc. So what we do initially, our performance goes down because we are adopting a new way of working and after that, that performance improves. Believe me or not that performance improves, but don't think that this performance improves too much. It is not the case that people who are working in Scrum setting, they are going to perform like two times than the normal people, etc. However, it is for sure that Scrum, XP, or all other agile methods, they improve the performance. However, if we just adopt those methods and don't continuously improve, after some time, our performance just become a straight line. We are not improving continuously. However, if we include continuous improvement or Kaizen strategies, we keep on improving ourselves on a specific speed. However, if we have a toolkit available with us, an agnostic toolkit that can basically help us to make decisions, help us to make choices out of uh, available choices, uh, maybe uh, in, uh, in a recommended fashion or even in a non-recommended fashion, but still guidance is available for us. There are strong chances that after learning that toolkit, we will be able to improve our performance much more quicker than adopting just a particular uh, prescriptive method or framework. That's the promise that is made by Discipline Agile. Any question? <coughs> okay, guys, now we are uh, moving further by concluding uh, this session by Discipline Agile. By uh, Discipline Agile, when we have Scrum, when we have Safe, when we have Less, Spotify, all other methods available. Uh, and we are concluding by looking on this graph. This graph is showing that, okay, uh, when we do experiment, there are chances that we may fail. But failing fast is fine, but what we really don't want is, we don't want a lot of failures while experimenting. And we can avoid it if we can use uh, a guided way of working, guided way of continuous improvement. It will help us to uh, basically succeed more than uh, often fail or often fail fast. And basically that was end of our session, uh, section two that talks about why disciplined agile. Any questions? Yes, in Kennedy. Uh, uh, th th thank you for the, uh, a uh, very good uh, uh, topic and presentation. Uh, it is getting quite clear. But wh wh what I just wanted to check is um, maybe if we are to summarize, uh, to say 
what is disciplined agile uh, I, I got that uh, it's an agnostic tool um, uh, th that gives us flexibility of using uh, different methodologies in different processes uh, so that uh, there's some flexibility as we as we work on uh, uh, on project so this this tool or this tool what I wanted to check um, with PMI is it something that you 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 write in an exam on or it's just something that you 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 study on your own um, or is it a certification or what, what is it in, in in a nutshell in a summary uh, what yeah. can we say yeah so uh, as you said the discipline agile is a process decision toolkit that is an agnostic toolkit really doesn't depend on any method or framework uh, it provides us uh, options to choose the life cycles it provides us uh, options to choose the agile strategies for particular process for better outcomes uh, pmi recently acquired discipline agile uh, back in 2018 uh, because like PMI thinks that that would be a right way of working in the future. Uh, on the other end, when we talk about the certifications, uh, there are few certifications that can help you to learn more about Discipline Agile and can become either Discipline Agile Scrum Master, Senior Scrum Master or Discipline Agile Coach. We can talk more about it uh, in upcoming slides, but there are certifications available. But these certifications are not a requirement. However, they are recommended to understand discipline agile more appropriately. Well, now we have seen that uh, by discipline agile. I hope it made some sense that uh, it can help us to choose our way of working. Uh, by ourselves and evolve our way of working by ourselves. Uh, now let's uh, dig deep into Discipline Agile and see that what is Discipline Agile. Discipline Agile is in fact described with the help of four views. One, DA mindset that is based on three things, principles, promises, and guidelines. And then Discipline Agile people or you can say that discipline, disciplined agile team members and their roles and responsibilities. Another way of looking on discipline agile is on the flow, the life cycles, uh, the life cycle support uh, provided by disciplined agile. Um, basically, it provide it gives us a choice to choose a life cycle as per our need, as per our context. And the last thing is uh, a toolkit, a toolkit of agile strategies, agile practices with the help of goal diagrams. We are going to look in each of them one by one. Firstly, uh, Let's start with the Agile Mindset. As I mentioned previously, Agile minds, Mindset is based on uh, Discipline Agile Principles, call them DA Principles, the promises we make uh, with ourselves as a team, and the guidelines uh, we follow. And the principles, who would volunteer to read these principles for me? Feel free to raise your hand. Otherwise, I would request someone. Chick soft. Sorry, uh, my, my voice is something else. I have some flu. Sorry, sorry. Uh, that's sorry, right. what sorry, what was your question? Sorry. Uh, yeah, Osman, what I want is like someone to read the principles for me, DA principle for me. Would you like to do? Okay. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. Uh, so we believe in these principles. Uh, delight customers, be awesome, context uh, counts, be pragmatic, choice is good, optimize flow, organize around products, services. Uh, organize around products and services, enterprise awareness. So these yeah. are the 
principle? These are the principle. We can go in depth of each of the principle, but uh, I'm just going to touch one of the principle. For example, enterprise awareness. Uh, DA toolkit is something that is equally applicable for the teams to work within the teams, but also work in a way that that should be like uh, uh, inter enterprise aware way. I mean, in the work we are doing, it should be aligned with enterprise vision, enterprise directions. Uh, what we really want is like, uh, when we are working as a discipline agile delivery team, not only we are developing some solution, but that solution would be used in operation. So we have to work with all those departments, all the people who are in the IT operation, the IT support, etc. Similarly, we we work uh, with the people who are working on the portfolio level, on a product level, or even on uh, I mean in the security teams or the business people or the people who take care of enterprise architecture, etc. So that's why what the DA does is uh, they made a landscape uh, in four different layers. We are going to discuss those four layers. In those layers, you will be able to clearly see that discipline agile delivery teams or development teams, they work in a fashion that is like enterprise aware fashion. Uh, they are well known that uh, that uh, what is enterprise architecture, what are the directions, strategies, and the vision of the enterprise, uh, what's happening at a portfolio level, business operation level, what are the uh, uh, security department requirements, data management requirements, etc., etc. So we are going to discuss this with the help of uh, four layers of DA landscape in some upcoming slides. And then there comes the promises we make to ourselves as a team, as a discipline agile delivery team. We call it that. That stands for discipline agile delivery. Would anyone like to volunteer uh, to read these promises for me? Yes, Noman. Okay, I can. Oh, yeah, thanks, Gultakin. So, yeah, we so promise to. Okay, so Gultakin is going to read the promises, and Noman would help me uh, to read the guidelines. Yes, Gultakin, first. Thank you. So, so, we promise to create psychological safety and embrace diversity, accelerate value realization, collaborate proactively make all work and workflow visible, improve predictability, keep workloads within capacity, improve continuously. So these promises are like basically drive from lean, lean mindset and agile mindset, including creating psychological safety, that safety could be at the le level of like learning safety, question safety, experimentation safety, so on, so forth. Uh, other promises are directly came from lean mindset and agile mindset. And then Noman, uh, the guidelines we normally follow uh, in discipline agile. Can you read for me? And follow these guidelines, validate our learnings, apply design thinking, attend to relationships through the value system uh, stream, create effective in environments that foster joy, change culture by improving the system, create semi-autonomous self-organizing teams, adopt measures to improve outcomes, leverage and enhance our organizational assets. Fantastic, thanks a lot, Roman. And these are the guidelines we normally follow. Let's talk about one of the guidelines, for example, applied design thinking. Uh, anyone would like to comment what is design thinking? Is it is it related to uh, thinking or in terms of technical uh, thing or designing or architecture of the software or the uh, increment? Yeah, it is about uh, software development or solution development. But yeah, Zishan Ali, would you like to comment more on it? Uh, basically, design thinking is uh, capturing the behavior of the customer. Like yes. it defined the processes like empathy, define, ideate, prototype, and test. True. Yes. 
Yeah, so basically, uh, design thinking is focused on like user centered or usage centered designs, usage centered solutions. I mean, the solutions that are developed while keeping the users in mind. So, first of all, what we do, we emphasize, mean, uh, we try to understand what are the user needs. Based on that, we generate the idea, we develop the prototype, we test that prototype, show to our users, and uh, with the help of some user acceptance testing, and then we confirm that, okay, the solution we are developing is something that is as per the needs, as per the behavior of the user. Now, let's move further after discussing our principles, promises, and guidelines and talk about uh, DA roles. Uh, in Scrum, we have already seen some roles and they were Scrum master, uh, team members or developers or product owner. In DA, uh, we basically have five key roles, uh, two more than Scrum, again, and these roles are not compulsory roles. These are the recommendations from the Discipline Agile. These are not a requirement for Discipline Agile teams and teams have all the choices, all the options available to define the roles for their own team. The five roles are team lead, product owner, team member, and these are the same roles as we have on Scrum. Team lead is something like Agile coach or Scrum master, okay? Product owner is the same role, that is vice of a customer, a one-stop shop where uh, development team can go and get the requirements, uh, get, the, uh, get what is needed by the business uh, or the business customers or where business people can go and can give their requirements. Uh, team members are basically same as like developers, the people who do business analysis work, uh, who do development work, who do testing work, uh, who ensures the, the transition of the solution into the operations, so on and so forth. Two more roles are architecture owner and stakeholder. Stakeholders um, are basically if you want to talk about stakeholder on a wider level, we can define stakeholders are individuals, group of individuals, government, communities, who can be affected or can affect team decisions, team activities, and team outcomes, the outcomes produced by the teams. These are our stakeholders. It includes not only uh, project sponsors, uh, functional managers, uh, the users of the solutions, our clients, our client of the clients, uh, even more than that, operations teams, support teams, so on, so forth. So they are one of the primary key role uh, in discipline agile teams. Yes, we have two ra hands raised. Yes. And these are from Zishan and Numan. Any question, Zishan? No, no, not me. Uh, okay, so because like hands were raised, so I thought it might be a question. On the other side, architecture owner. This architecture owner <coughs> works with the team. And it, this role is a little bit different from the solution architect or application architect, uh, this role comes with the more responsibility. In fact, architecture owner could be a team member, okay? However, he or she has an extra responsibility of owning the architecture of the solution, architecture of the application for which team is gathered together, the product on which team is working, someone who will ensure that architect the solution architecture or application architecture is developed properly from start till end and he or she is responsible to ensure that whatever work is being developed is developed as per uh, the architecture and that architecture is aligned with the enterprise architecture. So 
an extra responsibility for one of the team member. Similarly, uh, Discipline Agile uh, says that team lead could be a senior team member, a senior programmer who has a good understanding of Agile way of working, but it could be uh, someone uh, who could be a, a journalist, who could be like uh, uh, a totally different role. Uh, but if team is already well agile uh, aware, already uh, well versed with agile way of working, then one of the team member could be uh, the team lead or agile coach who ensures that all the processes, strategies uh, of agile that are chosen using BA toolkit are adopted well. Yes, any question guys? Uh, so, Numan, your hand is raised. Uh, I was thinking that why we have not included uh, these roles or these team roles into a stakeholder because these are some way or the other uh, being affected by the project or project outcomes or maybe the decisions of them are made. Similarly, the product owner, I mean, if we see in Agile, product owner is the client or client proxy. So uh, it's 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 sort of a major stakeholder who is prioritizing the uh, backlog and uh, based on the business need, uh, reprioritizing. In fact, uh, product owner, team leader, team member, then architecture owner, they are the team. They are not the stakeholders. So as an agile team, they will have the stakeholders who will be affected by the outcome of the solution. So all these are parts of team and uh, as compared to waterfall where project manager is uh, the main person and team is a stakeholder for the project manager in agile there is no project manager in fact team as a whole is responsible for the product it means that we work as a unit we work as a whole team and we have the stakeholders and when i say we it includes product owner, the developers, the architecture owner, the team lead. So consider this uh, this whole thing as one unit, as one entity, and all other people who are from operations, from sport, from uh, other business units, they are the stakeholders. They themselves are not stakeholders of each other. They are self-managed teams. They are self-organized teams. Okay, uh, I hope it made some sense. Otherwise you can ask uh, another question. Uh, on top of these primary roles, uh, Discipline Agile says that no doubt we believe in a whole team, whole cross-functional dedicated team who should be able to complete all the product work or all the release work or all the project work by themselves. But sometimes, especially when work is being done on the enterprise level, when there are multiple product teams are working, there are strong chances that we might need some supporting roles on temporary basis, on part-time basis. And these roles could be a role of a specialist such as like, uh, UX uh, user experience specialist, maybe an independent tester or a team of testers, some domain experts for, for example, from marketing, HR or taxation, some technical experts, for example, uh, security experts or data security experts or database administrators, etc. And we might have some integrators in case that when our solution is going to deploy with many other solutions, many other systems on the enterprise level and integrator basically help us to integrate with other systems. So there could be some supporting roles, but again, choice is with the team as per the need of the team, as per the context of the uh, environment. <coughs> Okay, so we discussed a lot. We are just moving further. Uh, just one point is this team lead is same like a scrum master or agile coach. We were talking about uh, another method, another set of terminologies, etc. Uh, but disciplined agile really don't believe in it. Uh, they say that there is no standard. 
or even if there is a standard, nobody follows it for agile terminologies. XP has its own terminologies. Scrum has totally different and unique terminologies. Spotify has their own terminologies, but we believe in general ter terminologies. The terminologies that should make sense, not only make sense for those people who are working on Scrum uh, or Spotify, who are working uh, in agile settings for long, but for those people who are now new to agile, but adopting agile or want to agile, want to adopt agile. For example, uh, uh, sorry, that's my son. Say hello. Yeah, uh, it's early morning, so he's already here. Let me help him. Okay, well, guys, my son, he goes to bed very early and wakes up with me very early. And so sorry about that. And he was like asking a lot of questions. <clears throat> Can we resume our discussion again? Okay, guys. Uh, yeah, thanks, Barros. So, uh, discipline agile. Their terminologies are standard. Uh, standard mean generic. They are not unique or specific. For example, they call iteration as iteration, team lead as a team lead. They don't call them scrum master or agile coach. They don't call daily scrum meetings or huddle, etc. They just call it daily meeting or daily coordination meeting. Retrospective is like uh, just retrospective. Team is team. And uh, architecture owner is just uh, someone who uh, take the responsibility of solution arch uh, architecture and domain expert is just a domain expert who knows the business uh, it could be called customer uh, by xp team or uh, scrum team so on so forth now we understood different roles we understood different different terminologies um, by discipline agile the next thing is Discipline Agile, they believe in choice is good. Why they think choice is good? Because they feel that um, context of each team, each enterprise, each project, each product is different from other. So what they do is they provide you the choice of life cycles. In total, they support six different type of life cycles that are based on Agile and lean life cycles the first one is scrum based agile as we said that we don't deny scrum but we say that we only choose the right practices from scrum this is a project based life cycle when instead of uh, long standing product teams our teams are gathered together to work on a product in a project fashion I mean for one release, for example. And the other life cycle is continuous delivery agile life cycle. These both came from agile, whereas discipline agile supports two more life cycles that are based on lean. One is Kanban based lean. The other one is continuous delivery lean. The difference between two is the first one is project based life cycle. And the second one is for long standing teams who are working on the same product for many different uh, projects. There are two more life cycles. The one is called exploratory. This life cycle is based on lean startup. This is something when you are going to do some experiment to 
create some like MVP, minimum viable product, to see that if this product will be acceptable for the users or not. And the last life cycle that is supported by Discipline Agile is program life cycle. And this is uh, when uh, Agile is on the enterprise level. Or in other words, when there are team of teams, when multiple teams are working on a product, then in that case, uh, the life cycle that comes in is called program life cycle. Any question? Okay, the purpose of providing the choices is, uh, again, uh, we believe that different teams, they have their unique situation and they can adopt a particular life cycle based on their need. Not only this choice is provided by Discipline Agile, but a guidance is provided by Discipline Agile toolkit to choose the right life cycle. Now, let's come back to one of the life cycle. That is our first life cycle. If you go to previous slide, this is the life cycle we are going to discuss. We can discuss all of them, but we are short of time. So. This life cycle, we call it Agile life cycle. It is Scrum based, but much more than Scrum. You can call it Scrum plus uh, plus. This is project based life cycle. Now let's have a look on this life cycle in this slide. Guys, look on this diagram, what it says. Basically, this is a life cycle that is a scrum based development life cycle and the block I put it here, this is what scrum provides, okay, how to develop a solution on a team level where we have product backlog or work items and then we take high priority work item, put in an iteration backlog and develop that. However, as I already mentioned, uh, Discipline Agile Toolkit uh, ensure that you work in an enterprise aware manner. When we say enterprise in uh, aware manner, it talks about that we are working with our portfolio management team or product management team. And from there, we get the vision of our project and the funding decisions. Similarly, from product management, we may get gui guidance for roadmaps. Uh, that could be business roadmaps, could be technology roadmaps or any other type of uh, roadmaps. For example, staffing roadmaps. Uh, Another important thing uh, in this particular life cycle is uh, where Scrum focus more on the development only. However, Discipline Agile guys think that every project based, uh, remember this particular word, project based Agile life cycle, it always has some phases. We are not talking about continuous delivery life cycles. We are not talking about long standing product teams. We are talking about project based life cycles. Each project based life cycle in its nature always have some phases. And here, if you look on this uh, particular diagram, this agile based life cycle has three phases. The first one is inception. The second one is construction and the third one is transition. Scrum guys, they also use these phases, but they don't call it phases. They still call them sprints. They still call the inception phase as a sprint zero. And the purpose of sprint zero or inception is basically to agree on the vision, uh, to uh, to agree on high level scope, to agree on the team structure, agree on the initial version of the architect, uh, secure some funding, uh, and at the end, just get enough so that we can start our construction of the work. Yes, Usman. Uh, as you mentioned here that 
we call these uh, with different terminologies in Scrum, like inception mm -hmm. and construction, and mm -hmm. like in the form of sprints. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm why I was confused in the early uh, in in the beginning of the you know this uh, discussion, and still I have the question. Mm -hmm. I have, you know, there is a certain confusion in the terminologies and jargon in a way. There is a guy who is really, a, you know, a, a authentic voice in Scrum and Scrum Alliance, you can say. They don't use the term sprint zero. And yeah, oh, yeah, and the concept, yeah. So, mm -hmm. so this is the problem. When I call them, okay, no, you, you don't use it ever. This is the PM, I think, or something like that. Why is, I, I have really... I can understand everything. You yeah. actually, if you're explaining the same thing in a different terminology, oh. then what what does it make uh, sense and give us advantage of doing uh, things? Uh, 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 in fact, what uh, here I'm trying to explain is uh, we should work in an agnostic way. We shouldn't work in a prescriptive way. We really don't need a control from a method, control from a framework. In the end, our focus is on a consumable solution. Our focus is on something our users want to use. Our focus should be something that should be of a use for a user. Okay, And in that case, we must not uh, make ourselves like uh, under the control of like a particular uh, particular method or framework that's basically discipline agile what i am saying is the things are same but they really want to use it in a particular way for example what i am trying to say here is in this particular diagram uh, uh, scrum guys they really don't want to use the world phases but in fact they work in phases they must have to start their project they must have to explore. They must have to explore the scope. They must have to form their team. They must have to secure funding in the start of a project. Okay. But they are hesitant to use the world of like the start of a project or initiation phase. That's uh, sometimes few of the guys, they want to use the word sprint zero. But again, you said that there is always a uh, uh, discussion around should we use word zero or sprint zero or not, etc, etc. But they, again, they will go for pre, like a word pre-game, I think if you have heard. Oh, yeah, another word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Free the game. thing is, yeah, <laughs> the thing is, what we really want to do is, uh, we want to work in an agnostic hybrid fashion, where we really want to choose the strategies, choose the agile approaches that should work for us. Instead of like, so, if you are working in a scrum, uh, now we are not going to use any method from XP, for example, any technical practice of pair programming or more programming, etc. Mm -hmm. Or we must have to do our daily scrum, otherwise we are screwed. So things like that. So, and, so in, in short, can we say that there is no gold standard around? This? Yeah, for sure. For sure. The gold standard is our best practices. There are no best practices in the world. There are some practices that work fantastically in one particular context, but they might not work at all in another context. So we should work in a context uh, aware manner. I mean, we should always consider our context while choosing. I think agnostic is a very important and key word here in discipline. Yes. yes. So we yes. should always focus on that thing. Yeah. Agnostic. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. Agnostic is very important. Another thing is enterprise aware matter. That is like even on a development level, on a team level, we should work while keeping our uh, enterprise requirements, enterprise level architecture, enterprise level VN in mind. That's another important thing. Another important thing, but I found out in Discipline Agile is uh, context, context counts. So always you should have a choice to choose your way of working. You should have a choice to evolve your way of working. Choose one set of strategies, apply it, they work fantastic. Otherwise, keep on evolving, keep, keep on improving your strategies. And the last thing is we should focus on technical excellence. That's very important. Instead of just focusing on the ceremonies, just focusing on lightweight artifacts from different methods, so on and so forth. And the last important thing that I found very useful in Discipline Agile is lean governance. Agile guys, they really don't want any type of governance from the stakeholders, from the sponsor or uh, portfolio level or product level, but this is not practical. 
when sponsor they spend money uh, when uh, customer they spend money uh, in any form uh, it could be fixed for a value stream it could be uh, fixed for a product but still they always want to see that what team is doing no doubt team is self organized self managed they show they are working in a transparent manner but uh, it's always good to give confidence to the customer to the sponsor though so that they can aware of what's happening at the team level no doubt they are not going to ask for the status reports they are not going to ask for any other particular document for the governance sake but still they should aware that what's happening on a team level and for that sake if you look here at the bottom there are a lean governance is implemented here there are some milestones on different phases remember guys we are just talking about our first life cycle we are not going to talk about our next life cycles that are continuous delivery life cycles okay continuous delivery life cycles are bit different than this this life cycle uh, here our focus is project based life cycle where a team is gathered together for a project that could be just first re release of a product or a solution or a service okay now uh, we are talking about the lean governance lean governance is implemented with the help of not status reports not artifacts not uh, 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 not some documents but with the help of lightweight risk based milestones for example stakeholder vision mean team and stakeholders both are at the same vision they have this agreement that they are going to develop a product that will be fulfilling the stakeholders requirements similarly proven architecture that is like one of the early milestone for the construction or development phase that says that uh, we should be able to prove that the architecture we suggested is going to work it shouldn't be the case that uh, we develop the whole application but uh, it's not going to work uh, similarly a few more milestones they are given at the bottom and we can discuss it if needed and i think there is a hand raised from usman uh, yeah actually before you started this first point inception i had one question in my mind maybe you discuss later yeah. If we talk about transition, is it the same thing uh, that when we say there uh, at the end of a sprint or iteration, when we get a uh, shippable, releasable, uh, release, uh, releasable product uh, or a, like increment, yeah. uh, after that we have an option to deploy it or not, like you know, yeah, in the true. hardening, hard hardening sprint or whatever, you know, to true. make it refine and improve in the transition phase. Is it the same thing? Uh, yeah, somewhat it's the same. In fact, what happened when we talk about project-based uh, life cycle, uh, like agile project-based life cycle, what happens is normally after first sprint or first one or two sprint, we really don't have something that is like uh, of juice. I mean, uh, something that, that could be of, uh, of that level where we can say that it could be released. In fact, it takes three to four sprints to produce something that should be of some use for the customers isn't it but in my view as per agile we have to agree on it before we starting the sprint or anything that we are going to have an extra step or not or like like an hydro uh, uh, you know uh, each sprint a hardening sprint or okay to have so, some extra you know it is said had like in the definition of done or you know where we yeah, do it yeah uh, i'm going to talk about it so basically uh, uh, there are strong chances that at the mean especially in the start uh, at the end of each sprint we might not have enough functionalities that can go into the production it may take especially in the first few sprints it may take one to two uh, sorry two to three sprints to generate something a skeleton of the application that should be useful for the production okay now what is transition as you said that it could be called a release sprint okay it could be called a transition sprint however the hardening sprint is the terminology that is normally used when we need to still improve our product 
And if there are some technical debts or some quality issues, some testing issues, and we still basically ensure that everything is salted before going into the production. All these naming conventions are same like transition. And the, in this particular phase is like, it says that, okay, if a shippable product is ready, here we call it consum consumable solution instead of cheap, shippable product. Uh, just a naming convention, okay? A consumable solution, if it is uh, ready to be uh, deployed, if yes, deploy it. In fact, uh, Usman, when we will be talking about our next life cycles that are continuous delivery life cycles, we will not have our inception phase. We will have, we will not have our transition phase. In fact, what we are saying that instead of uh, a project-based life cycle, it is more like a product-based life cycles for continuous delivery, where a team who is working on the same product from last many different projects or releases, okay, and they have become long-standing teams. In that particular case, each iteration, each sprint will have a shippable product, and we will, with the help of some automated tools, we will keep on adding it in our transition queues so that it can go into the production. And that level has become where we say that DevOps. Okay, a continuous uh, integration, continuous uh, deployment uh, uh, to the operations. And that will, and again, that is an other choice. So as I earlier mentioned that uh, Discipline Agile provides you the choices to choose uh, which life cycle is going to work for you uh, based on your context. Okay, now uh, we already talked about uh, Discipline Agile principles, Discipline Agile teams, and Discipline Agile choice of the life cycles. The last thing, in, in fact, the most important thing in Discipline Agile is process goals. You can say, you can call them process outcomes as well. Whatever we do, we do it for the sake of some outcomes. Uh, and Discipline Agile provides you the choices uh, for these processes. According to Discipline Agile, for the inception phase, normally we have these process goals, which are given here. Can anybody read for me? Akmal yes. Khan. Yes, Akmal. Akmal, are you here? Should I read? Oh yeah, Usman, please. Okay, so uh, this is about uh, uh, discipline agile delivery process goals. So should I start from this uh, form team? The yeah, purple one? yeah, form team, yeah. Okay, form team align with enterprise direction, then explore scope and then identify architect strategy, plan the release and develop test strategy, develop common vision and then secure funding. So inception, are, get the team going to the right direction. Yeah, so that is basically inception phase and normally it comes uh, when we are uh, formed together, We when we are get together as a team for a project, not as a long standing product team uh, who is working on the same product for a long time where we really don't need to form the team. We really need not to align with enterprise direction because we are already aligned. Uh, we already know the scope again at a high level not like that waterfall uh, at a epic level similarly we are uh, we are uh, happy with our uh, architecture strategy we know that how we are going to re release uh, we know that uh, testing we are going to use the testing methods we are going to use we know the vision of the product so on and so forth and funding is already secured for a particular product or a, for a particular value stream However, in case if we are going to start a project or product from start, then these are the eight process goals that normally we really want to do it, isn't it? And then there comes uh, 
uh, five more process goals and these process goals are during the development work and uh, i would request someone else um, uh, yes tevinga uh, sorry teving goa matsubova i'm sorry if i pronounce it wrong would you like to read it for me victor should i read it uh, uh yeah mm. oswell yes uh prove architecture early yep just changing stakeholder needs mm. thank you Produce a potentially consumable solution. Mm -hmm. you know, improve quality. Yeah. And accelerate value delivery. Yeah. So when we start our developing uh, development, what we really want to do is like uh, the architecture that we proposed. Uh, we prove it early that it is going to work. Uh, otherwise, we would love to fail fast. Okay, uh, and wanna spend our energy and resources on some something else. Once it is proven, the next thing is uh, on ongoing basis in each sprint, we just uh, address changing needs of stakeholders. Uh, and uh, at the end of each sprint, we want to create uh, a deployable solution, a consumable, consumable solution. Uh, and we really want to ensure that quality is building in that solution by using the techniques, for example, test driven development, so on and so forth. And we really want to deliver our value in a more often and early manner for the competitive advantage of our clients. So this is some of the process goals uh, used by used during the construction phase. And then there comes the transition phase, two process goals. One, ensure that production is ready, I mean, our solution is ready for, um, uh, ready to transit to production. And if it's ready, deploy that solution. And then there comes the last six process goals that are on ongoing basis throughout different phases or for later life cycles, like continuous life cycles, yeah, you know, like in the development life cycle, these activities are being done on regular basis. Grow team members, coordinate activities, address risks, evolve our way of working, leverage and enhance our existing infrastructure and govern delivery team, obviously in a lean manner. So these are process goals. Uh, what I have seen is like, uh, we are, we took too much of time in our discussion, isn't it? So what I am going to do, I will skip my last, uh, sorry, upcoming session and we'll complete this session only, okay? Now let's talk more about it. Um, and uh, let's have a look on one of the process, uh, one of the process goal. Uh, here in this particular slide, what I showed you is basically I showed you the table of contents of a uh, Bible of Discipline Agile. Uh, we call it Choose Your Way of Working. This book is organized into six different sections. First section is introductory. Se second section talk about the inception phase. And under this section, Uh, let me switch on the pointer. Under this section, for each process goal, there is a separate one chapter. And we are just going to look on one of the process goal that is called secure funding. Uh, in fact, what Discipline Agile advised you is, uh, as a team, you should think that out of these process out outcomes or process goals, which process goals you really want to work at. Okay, I, I just took one example of secure funding. Okay, and then we have rest of the sections uh, talking about uh, construction, release, and sustaining our continuous uh, process goals, so on, so forth. When we talk about uh, process goal called secure funding, as an example, this process goal is well depicted, well explained with the help of 
a goal diagram. This goal diagram is just like a decision tree. Uh, when we are secure fund, uh, when we are securing funding, we have to cater following issues. We have to choose our funding strategy. We have to choose our uh, funding scope, and we have to then get our funds or access our funds. We normally call them decision points. Again, this is called by uh, discipline agile. So we have to make decisions around these points. What discipline agile toolkits gives you, it gives you options uh, of the strategies. These options could be in a sequence, mean in a priority form. If you find this arrow here, okay, it means that the uh, options given here are like in a sequence, in a recommended sequence. Again, there is no prescriptive sequence. There is a recommended sequence, okay? However, few of these uh, uh, diagrams, they don't have these arrows. If there are no arrows, and you have just like this type of uh, option, this is called non-sequenced options. I mean, these are the options which are not in a particular order. You can choose any of them. Now let's experiment one of them. We are going to secure funding for our project. Uh, the first thing is funding strategy. There are multiple options. The best options, if arrow is given here, is the one which are given at top and less uh, preferred options are which are given at the bottom. If you look on this arrow, this arrow is showing that the chart by feature is a fantastic way of, secure, of choosing funding strategy. This is one form of agile contracts if you are working in agile contracts. The other option that is uh, second in place is cost plus option. Third is time and material, then stage gate, then fixed price, and the last one is the fixed price with exact cost. What discipline agile recommends you go for charge by feature. But what happened is uh, many organizations, they are adopting agile. They are not fully agile. For them, it is very difficult to digest for this method, charge by, uh, charge by feature in the start. In the start, uh, they might not like to allow you to go for an agile contract that uh, help you to charge by feature, charge by a user story, etc. Okay, in that case, what Discipline Agile recommends you uh, to go with the option that is okay in the start, that is a good option in the start, but you can always go for better option. So the option which are good and a good starting point are given in bold italic forms. Can you see here? Time and material and stage gate are two of the options that could be a good starting point for you. So it means that if your organizations, your clients are not fully agile and they don't understand what does it mean charge by feature, then they might like to go for time and material. It could be a good starting point. Similarly, choose funding scope. Best is like funding should be based on value streams or line of business. If not, then at least on product based. And the last option is project based funding. Okay. Uh, and a good starting point could be product based uh, funding strategy. Mean the funding should be allocated for a product instead of just for a project. But the good thing is if funding could be uh, uh, could be like provided to you on value stream basis or line of business basis. Uh, access funds, uh, once funding is allocated, one of the good ways like there should be a funding pool where uh, funds could be extracted or if you have to make request, it should be very informal and it could be a good starting point because like sometimes clients really don't want to put the fund in the pool and uh, allow you just to uh, get it whenever you want. And the last preferred option is a very formal request to access the fund all the times because it is a wastage. So this is like one of the way of like uh, 
to approaching a process goal in an agnostic way where you have like all the strategies available with some uh, recommendations and you can choose any of them as per your need. Any question here? Okay, in the next slide, what I'm going to show, I'm going to show you that uh, in uh, Discipline Agile Bible or Choose Way of Working book, not only these goal diagrams are available, but also they, get, they provide you uh, a description and trade-off of each of the method. Here in this slide, if you look, uh, funding uh, options. You can clearly see that it shows you uh, the options. You remember charge by future, cost plus, time and material, stage gate, so on and so forth. Uh, what are these methods? Not only its description is provided here, but also references are provided so that you can read further. And on top of that, a short trade-off is given. What are the advantages of these methods? For example, chart by feature or cost class. What are the advantages and what are the disadvantages? The whole trade-off is given so that uh, you should have a choice. You should have uh, an informed choice to choose one way or the other way. And then, uh, Another important concept has come here. I'm not going in depth of it, but I just want to go through it because it is very, very important. Discipline agile work in an enterprise aware manner. What it is saying that the whole DA landscape is not on a team level, it is on a uh, enterprise level. Uh, it not only talks about the fundamental concepts of discipline agile that are principal promises and guidelines, different choices for the life cycles, roles of uh, discipline agile, and how to choose your way of working, as we discussed in last three slides. But it also talk about how discipline agile delivery teams work in disciplined DevOps settings. When uh, teams are working like using the DevOps method where development work is uh, uh, Translated or deployed into the operation on a very uh, in the operation on a very regular basis. How development teams or delivery teams work with the operations teams, including security, data management, lease management, support, and IT operations teams. These are well supported with the help of process goals and process goal diagrams. Mean uh, there is a whole process goal that shows that how do you uh, discipline agile delivery team works with the security teams, data security, information security, network security, etc., or data management team, so on and so forth. Similarly, on the next layer, it shows that how teams work on the value stream level, where they have to work with the portfolio, product, and program teams, and where they have to basically um, do R&D, work with business operations, strategy team, governance, marketing, because it is on a value stream level. Uh, value stream is something like a particular uh, domain for which funding is allocated, marketing, continuous improvement, sales, so on and so forth. Similarly, on the highest level, discipline agile teams work at a enterprise level, same like SAFE, uh, where they consider enterprise architecture, uh, people management department, information technology, asset management, transformation, finance, vendor management, so on, so forth. So, uh, DA is something that is like beyond uh, team level. It is uh, on the team level, but also on the uh, DevOps level, value stream and enterprise level. However, choose your way of working. Uh, the book, uh, it is fully focused on um, discipline agile delivery level. It talks about uh, the DAD life cycles, either agile, lean or continuous delivery life cycle or a program life cycle, and what are the different process goals and how each process goal is uh, guided with the help of goal 
diagrams. Any question? I'm uh, skipping few more slides that talk about that how uh, on a value stream level, sorry, on the DevOps level, how each process area or process blade is supported with the uh, guidance uh, of goal diagram. Uh, this is DevOps. Uh, I, uh, I believe that most of you uh, know about it. This is where development and an operation then they work hand in hand so that um, the development could be trans translated to operations on regular basis uh, in a uh, in a, uh, in a good manner uh, where it should be working in the operations. This complicated diagram shows that how DAD teams work with uh, DevOps uh, people, including IT, IT operations, support, data management, uh, business operations. Business operation is at enterprise level though. Uh, security, etc., and uh, how the feedback is given, uh, given from DA level to the uh, IT operations and from IT operations back to uh, development team. So development and operations, how they work together and how DA toolkit supports it. For example, one process area of DevOps was release management and this release management is supported with the help of goal diagram. And that was basically end of uh, session three, uh, sorry, section three. There are three more sections, but uh, I'm just going to skip this section. The reason being is like uh, we already covered a lot and uh, we have very less time available. Now, if you are interested in discipline agile certifications, uh, I can quickly cover that particular section. Otherwise, you can just contact me directly and can ask any question if you have. So what do you suggest, guys? You can brief us about certification choices that we have for discipline and agile. Yeah, thank you. So what I'm going to, I'm going to skip uh, section four. It tells you how to choose your way of working. That's quite a lot in it. Now let's come back to our um, DA certification or PMI certifications. As I mentioned, PMI recently acquired um, Discipline Agile. Now all the certifications are under a suite called PMI Agile certifications. In total, there are five certifications. Uh, most of you are aware of ACP, Agile Certified Practitioner by PMI. Uh, this certification is for those guys uh, who really want to learn many different uh, agile uh, methods and agile concepts. Uh, it was uh, offered back in 2012, but uh, my today's focus is on discipline agile certifications. In total, there are uh, four certifications. First one is Discipline Agile Scrum Master. The second one is Discipline Agile Senior Scrum Master. Then we have Discipline Agile Coach. And the last one is Discipline Agile Value Stream Consultant. Now, there could be a question, you know, why Scrum Master? It's a Scrum term. Basically, now it, it, Scrum Master has become that famous. Instead of like a Scrum role, it has become a job. Okay, so people are looking for like a Scrum Master, you know, they're advertising this job like this, Scrum Master, okay? So that's why they really don't wanna go away from this market, so that they call them Discipline Agile Scrum Master. Noman, please ask a question. There is only one question. Uh, I, um, maybe this is a, a advanced question. Uh, I recently heard that they have transformed DASM to DASSM. I mean, anybody who wants to do DASM uh, can go for DA SSM. Mm -hmm. uh, am I correct? Uh, 
not really no one basically DASS uh, sorry DASM that is discipline engineer scrum master that is for those guys who don't have experience in uh, agile or discipline agile or any other method uh, but they want to learn about it they want to learn agile and how uh, discipline agile looks at the agile okay so no experience needed for that uh, there is a training course of 16 hours and uh, yes, Kennedy. Uh, thank you. Uh, I, I just wanted to take away the discipline mm -hmm. the Scrum Master is uh, um, equivalent to the to the other Scrum uh, certifications around, like the certified Scrum Master and uh, those other are, are they. Are they equivalent or it's different? So what I would say is like there is no standard for the certifications. Uh, senior Scrum Master, oh, sorry, Certified Scrum Master is focused on Scrum itself. But when you will do Discipline Agile Scrum Master, it will tell you how to use Discipline Agile Toolkit to improve the performance of your team and help your team to work in an agile way, but uh, with an agnost method agnostic manner. So we really cannot compare them because there is no standard for it. However, if you wanna compare, you can compare these PMI certification with each other and I can comment on it. For example, Scrum Master is when you really wanna mm -hmm. learn more about, sorry. Uh, so Scrum Master is, when you don't have any experience or knowledge about Scrum, oh sorry, about uh, Agile, and you wanna learn more about it, especially Discipline Agile, uh, you can do this uh, certification. It will be two days training, that is 16 hours of education. And then after that, you will be provided with the right learning material, and you have to appear for the exam within 30 days of completing your training and exam fee, training fee, learning material fee, everything is included in the package. This is not common with PMI if you know the PMI. And then there comes a senior scrum master. This is for someone who either got ACP or who got two years agile experience, then they can go for next level where basically they can work as a leader on a team level, they can form the teams, they can develop the team, they can, um, they can basically improve the team performance using emotional intelligence, use pragmatic techniques for, uh, uh, for choosing a way of working, using discipline agile, so on and so forth. Again, it will be a two day training and then you have to pass exam within 30 days. Every fee is included within the package. Then there comes the next certification. This is next level certification. This is for DA coaches. These are the guys who basically uh, train at an enterprise level, not only on the team level, okay? Uh, the, the focus of uh, Agile coaches are bring real business agility within the organization, both on team level, on the department's level, and on the enterprise level. It requires at least three years of experience and also Discipline Agile Senior Scrum Master certification and a training of two to three days. And again, for Discipline Agile coach, uh, you need to appear for exam within 30 days. And the last thing is, a last certification is for those guys who work on a value stream level. Uh, this certification is called Discipline Agile Value Stream, value stream Consultant. It is basically a amalgam of or combination of, yes, Usman. Uh, can we, because, uh, can we have... Uh all the details uh, including the prerequisites and the fee and the training material can be found on the PMI site yeah. all the certifications or you can ask us because like we are premier authorized training partners PMI has this information on a high level but uh, especially for the course how to enroll for the course then you can ask us okay then I can you can directly I can talk to you Sure. Yeah, surely.
And uh, this last certification that is value stream consultant, this is amalgam or combination of disciplined agile and another method called flex. Flex is a method that helps to minimize the waste uh, when we are working on a value stream level. Okay, the purpose is uh, to uh, bring more agility while working on this level. It requires uh, three years of experience and previous qualification, sorry, certification that is discipline agile course certification and training plus exam as normal. Now, in upcoming slides, I shared a lot of more information, what is covered in Scrum Master, what is covered in Senior Scrum Master. And uh, if uh, you are training uh, for us, uh, sorry, uh, training with us, uh, how we are going to help you to get these certifications uh, and what are the learning materials we will provide you. And the last thing is uh, what type of learning portals that PMI and our school provides to our learners but uh, i'm going to skip all of that and uh, if you want to enroll uh, just feel free to ask me and i will let you know how can you enroll for these certifications now i would conclude my uh, uh, session on this point if you really want to enroll uh, just ask me and here uh, our next session for Discipline Agile Scrum Master and Senior Scrum Master is starting from 24th of May. It will run for two weeks, Monday to Thursday, uh, and the uh, timings are given here for different countries. For USA and Canada, it is 1 to 3 p.m. For India, 10.30 to 12.30, and that is night. Uh, Saudi Arabia 8 to 10 p.m. For Pakistan, it is 10 uh, again 10 to 12 uh, at night. New Zealand, it would be morning, and same for Australia, that would be early morning. Pricing: uh, If you really want to enroll for any of the certification for two day, you can enroll it for 6.99 US dollars. However, our early bulb is expiring on 7th May and early bulb price is 849. It includes the training material and the exam voucher for one attempt. However, if you don't avail our early bulb, after that the price is 899 US dollars. So if you are interested, just feel free to uh, contact us or contact me directly. You can contact me over LinkedIn uh, where my mobile number that is also useful for WhatsApp, uh, you can get it and can um, ask the questions. Any questions? Well, then I'm going to stop my uh, presentation on this point and uh, going to stop the recording and it will be available 